Welcome back everyone to another episode of All About Mechanics. Now today is going to be Fang Lair. This is from the Dragon Bones DLC. It is a very, very hard dungeon, especially the hard mode, which we are going to show you. We're going to use the same setup as before. One tank, one healer, one stamina DPS, and one magic DPS, meaning no rolls are left out. This is a tricky one, so pay close attention. Here we go. Now, if you ever wanted a real challenge in a dungeon, this place is it. This is very, very difficult, especially the hard mode. It's mechanic heavy and your tank needs to be extremely aware of your situations. Now, the pulls are very similar to what you've seen already. There's lots of little trash pulls, lots of little undead and stuff like that. But they do have a lot of basic mechanics that you have to pay attention to. I know a lot of people forget the interrupt mechanics and block mechanics that you get taught in the tutorial. It's very, very easy to skip that kind of stuff. But in this dungeon, it is very unforgiving if you do so. So if you see anything that requires interrupting with the red flashes coming out of them, make sure you bash them or interrupt them with any appropriate skill that you have. If you see heavy attacks and you're not the tank, you're going to need to dodge roll because these will one-shot you. Now, these pulls here, pull them in together as quickly as possible as the tank. Cluster them up so everyone can do area of effect damage and try and stay in the heals as much as possible. You'll notice that we're using time stop in here quite a lot. That is to help the tank with CC. Things will run wild, things will run all over the place. We want to make sure that they're controlled. This here, the Bone Colossus, by the way, the tank must turn away from the group. If you get heavy attacked by this as the tank and you are blocking, you will survive, but you will be knocked back. If you get hit by this as a DPS or a healer and you're blocking, you are dead. The Deathmongers need to be interrupted, so make sure you interrupt them quickly and burn them down as fast as you can because they do enrage if they start channeling up their energy. Now, again, the Bone Colossus are very, very important. If you are a DPS or a healer and one of them is targeting you, it will raise its hand in the air for a heavy attack. In your mind, count out 3, 2, 1, dodge, in that order. If you try and dodge instantly, it will get you. If you dodge too late, it will get you. It will still spin and hit you. So 3, 2, 1, dodge, as soon as you see that heavy, and you will be fine. Now, this first boss here is kind of a big, big ad pull. To start with, you want to dodge roll as soon as you see her projectiles coming from the shadows around the outside of the room, or the reflections of her, if you like. Apart from that, make sure that your tank is centering everything in the middle as much as possible. Don't get in the Bone Colossus' face and kill everything with as much AoE as you can. The ghosts must be chained in or pulled in with any form of um, range pulling CC abilities, whether it be um, Silver Leash or Dragon Knight Chains or whatever you've got, because otherwise they will fire Winter's Grasp across the ground and everybody will die. It's really, really strong, so don't stand in it. The Bone Colossus are not as strong as the traditional ones throughout this particular dungeon. They are kind of trash, but they do hurt and they do have the big, big AoE as you saw there. If you dodge roll and kind of catch it on the end, you won't be too bad. But if you do catch it in the very, very center, it will do quite a lot of damage. You want to make sure you avoid that as much as possible. The last wave actually has two Bone Colossus and loads of skeletons. Again, keep your AoEs down as much as possible. Throw your time stops in if you can. And when these Colossus guys burst, be very, very careful not to get caught by them both. If you get caught by one, you'll probably survive. If you get caught by both, you're dead. Now, the time stop idea, that is to control as many adds as possible, as I already said at the beginning. It's not necessarily restricted to any particular role. For this place, you are going to have to take a lot of practice. You're going to have to take people you know or that you are growing to know. Basically, try and keep the same group as much as possible if you're going for the hard mode achievement. If not, just decide which one of you is going to put on time stop and keep on top of that kind of consistent room AoE kind of CC that you're going to need. Now, you can put it on the healer, you can put it on the tank, you can put it on DPS. It's entirely up to you. Whoever is capable of doing it, go for it. This pull here, again, pull everything into the middle, time stop it up if you can, if not talons it as a tank. Just make sure as a tank you turn everything away from you and as a DPS and the healers you obviously stay behind stuff. This revivifier here took quite a lot of damage already so it was pretty much almost dead by the time we got to him but you do want to focus those as soon as possible. They rage and they make other things really, really strong. These plants here, if you want to wind Finn up, call them mushrooms, he hates it. Um, if you stand near them, they will explode and they'll give you a really, really nasty long durated damage over time. Don't get caught by them. Let them pop and run past them. This is a really serious Bone Colossus here, just like the one we saw before the first boss. They do die quite quickly. They don't have a lot of health. If they hit you as a DPS or a healer, you are going to die. So if they aim a heavy attack, make sure you dodge roll it at the right time. Count down, 3, 2, 1, dodge. If it's a tank, just hold block and you should be okay. Although you can dodge if you choose to. Again, the Revivifier must be focused and the Harvester needs to die as well. The Harvester is a new enemy to you. You haven't seen those already. They do need to be interrupted because otherwise they cast nasty abilities and start healing people and all that kind of nasty stuff. It's not very nice. When they glow red, they need to be dead. So make sure your tanks focus those as soon as possible so you can get them down quickly. As much AoE on the ground in this dungeon as you can. Every single fight, every single ad pull should be clustered as much as possible with all your AoE down and focus the big guys. 
anything that is basically using a staff or wearing a skirt, you need to make sure you kill it. So you've got a Deathmonger over there, you've got a Dissector as well, you need to get those down. Bone Colossus is primary of course, but if the tank's got it under control, kill those casters quick and interrupt them if you need to. Watch out for the Dissector because he does have a two-hander and that uppercut will kill a DPS or a, or a healer outright. So be very, very careful. They're kind of like the Zivkin of the Daedra dungeons, basically. The big guys you always have to kill first. The other guys will die to AoE. So keep that kind of um, hierarchy in mind. Big guys die first, little guys will die passively. That, however, is on the condition that you keep your dots on the ground as a DPS. Throughout this entire dungeon, keep that kind of mentality. Always keep your dots on the ground, no matter whether you're doing a rotation or not. This again, the Bone Colossus, the tank must turn this away from the group. If you're a DPS and you're standing in front of the Bone Colossus, you are an idiot. Do not stand in front of them. The only time you're going to be standing in front of them is on the last boss, and at that point in time, you either need to kill it or get out of the way. Now, another pull here. Pull everything into the center again. As much AoE on that ground as you possibly can. Focus the big stuff, and then kill the small stuff with as much AoE as you have. Even just putting down a few dots and spin to win will cover it, because they don't have a huge amount of health. But as you can see, again, we're putting down as much CC as possible. That time stop is always up. We've got one from the DPS occasionally, and the healers occasionally putting one in as well. Doesn't matter who you put it on, just as long as there is always one active. That makes it a lot, lot easier to control. Sometimes talons and just an individual stun isn't enough. Time stop will stun or completely stop everything that is CC-able. So it really, really helps. Again, AoE's down on the ground. Focus on as much damage as you can in area of effect while focusing single target on the big guys. The tanks must taunt those, by the way. Don't just jump in the middle and start holding block. You must taunt them. Bone Colossus again, if you're a DPS or, or a healer, stay behind it. See that big heavy attack he just did then? We weren't sure whether it was on the tank or the DPS. Even though it had a taunt, it could have chose its target before it landed. So you've got to make sure you dodge roll that heavy. Be careful. More AoEs here. Put it all on the ground. Kill all the squishies. But the, the range guys are quite far spread out in this one. So make sure you interrupt them if they need be and focus them. They're quite large. They do a lot of damage. You've got another Deathmonger in the middle there. He's got to die. The Bone Colossus isn't quite in the fight yet. You can bring him in if you choose to, or you can fight him afterwards. It depends on your aggro range or depends on your com comfortable uh, kind of group setup. If you're not comfortable taking one of those on at the same time as the Adpool, don't do it. It's up to you, though. Now, watch those poison things again. There's some nasty plants lying around on the floor. Don't stand on them. And if they do burst, get away from them. Otherwise, you get a really big poison dot. And as a DPS, you'll probably only take about four ticks before you die. Again, another pull. You can see this repeat over and over and over. Stack them all up. Burn them all down. Very, very simple. And if you don't have very high DPS, do not worry. You will still kill them. They won't um, wipe your entire dungeon. That's not what's going to happen. You just have to make sure that you control them. Keep them still. Kill them as quick as you can. It's not a case of if you don't burn them, you're stuffed. But the more damage, obviously, you have, the quicker you get through them. Bone Colossus, again, is primary. I'm not sure who he's on, so we all dodge rolled anyway, just in case, but the timing was so good that nobody got hit. So be very, very aware of the Bone Colossus mechanics. These guys do put out Lich Crystals occasionally, so if you see that spreading AoE underneath your feet, just be careful and step out of it. It's very, very easy to see. Big Lich Crystal, spreading AoE, get out before it bursts. Now, this fight is the Punk Killer. This is the one that will wipe your group over and over and over and over if you don't pay attention to mechanics or if you don't understand the mechanics. There are three skeletal bosses. There's a guar, there's a sench, and there's a bear. And what you want to do is stack the sench and the guar and the bear all together. But you've got three dogs in. You don't want the dogs to touch you. So what you need to do is go around in a chosen direction, whether it be clockwise or anti-clockwise, with your group until those dogs have exploded. And try and keep them central as possible so they blow up on the tank. In the meantime, you want to kill the sench as fast as you can. Whatever DPS you've got is fine. Just make sure you focus him first. And then work on the guar and the bear. Now, what we've done here is instead of going around in circles over and over and over, we've positioned ourselves in such a fashion that the tank is always having its back to the dogs when they spawn, the wolves. So you'll see that they're now coming in from the side. We could go around in a big circle, whoever's got aggro kills them. But what we've done is we've made the tank deliberately walk into them. The tank's quite chunky anyway, so we can take those hits. If you're a DPS or a healer, you are going to die to a one-shot. But if you're the tank, you can take it, or at least most can. So you'll see them coming again. The three dogs are coming in, they will pick a target, and they'll explode. So we stay close together, so they come towards us, and the tank gets in the way, and they go boom. That's probably your safest bet. Fail on that, go around in a very tight circle, and keep them close to the middle so they explode on the tank, and just don't let them touch you. Now, something to know, as you can see, the guar and the sench are sitting down. They are on a timer. If you take too long to kill the bear, it's not a problem. Doesn't matter how much DPS you've got, you can still kill them. 
but the Senj will get back up. As soon as he gets up, he will fear someone, which you cannot break, and that person who is feared will get jumped on by the Senj. When this happens, that Senj must be interrupted. If it doesn't happen, that person will die. So be very, very clear. When the Senj wakes up, your key focus is to interrupt it as soon as possible. Then get it down, then carry on with the bear again. Rinse, repeat. Very, very simple, but if you scatter, it will go wrong. This pool here, you do have dogs now, or at least they look like dogs, and these don't actually blow up like the ones you've just seen. I know it's really, really scary after you've just seen suicide dogs that just blow up and kill everybody, but these ones do not, so don't worry. Again, revivifiers, harvesters, all those good things, they must be focused first if you can help it. All the little ads will die from passive AoE. Bone Colossus, again, you know how they work. Stay out of their face. If you're the tank, you can block it. If you're not, you cannot. Don't even try. The only way to avoid a heavy attack from a Bone Colossus, if you are not a tank, is to dodge roll at the right time. Big pull in here. Lots of AoE on the hill. It's a very awkward one for the tank. Put everything into the center. Stack it all up. Get your time stop in there and make sure everything is nice and cozy. Do as much area effect damage as you can while focusing on the guys with the staves and the skirts. The big ones, basically. Same in every single pool. Always get those guys down first. That is going to be crucial when we get to the crystals. But the crystals aren't here yet. You'll see what I mean in a moment. Every single dungeon has kind of breadcrumbs throughout it teaching you mechanics. This dungeon is no different. There are mechanics to learn. Now this dude here is a basic lich boss. He has very similar mechanics to the rest of the liches in the game. He has uh, lich crystals and all that good stuff where you basically just have to stay in the gaps and you'll be fine. But there are totems around the room which will light up during the fight. When they light up, you need to kill them fast. And I'll explain that in a moment when we get there. So, you can do as much damage to him single target as you like while staying out of the AoEs. As you can see here, we're now starting our fight. We're going to do our damage and stay alive. And there's circles on the ground that you need to step away from. Don't scatter around the room, you'll kill each other. You all get your own AoEs. Just step out. If you get caught, break free. But try not to get caught if you can. Another AoE, just move out of the way and come back in again. Now... When the totems are called, as you can see there's one to my right there, that's a lurcher one, it's green and it's got all nasty root mechanics and stuff, so you want to break free out of that, or dodge roll. Hopefully your healer's on point, because I just got stuck. Now what you need to do is spread out and kill this as fast as possible. You will all get your own AoEs, you don't want to stack them up. Spread out, get away from the circles, get back in. Skeletons and adds will spawn. Now the skeletons, if they explode on the crystal, or on the totem, will do more damage to it. So you want to kind of keep them really, really close if you can help it. Above all, do not panic, stay out of the circles. They're normally spread in circles, so you've got plenty of time to see where they are. As you can see here, between two of them, no damage done. Absolutely fine. Do not panic. Again, this is a stack and burn fest until the next totem comes up. And rinse, repeat. Every single totem will have different damage effects. So one may be a poison effect, one might be stack and lightning and all that nasty stuff. If you get lightning, you all get your own AoE. Do not overlap them or you will kill each other. So be very careful. Now, as you can see, obviously, we are not going to kill the last totem because the boss is almost dead. But if he wasn't almost dead, we would go over to that fire totem over there and go and kill it and then come back again. If you've got low DPS in your group, that's not a problem. There's no enrage mechanic as such, which will prevent you from necessarily passing it if you don't have X amount of DPS. You can just kill the totems, come back, kill the totems, come back, and so on and so forth. However, if you try to nuke it without killing any totems, when it gets down to 25% health, he will go immune and you're going to have to kill them anyway. So, the choice is yours. This pool here, just one simple ad pool. Pull them all into the middle, kill the big guys, AoE on the small stuff. Make sure you follow the interrupt mechanics, and of course, as the tank, turn everything away from the group as much as you can. This boss is also a bit of a pug killer, because people cannot watch their feet. Or maybe they don't understand the mechanics. This boss has a kind of spirit above his head, and it will fear a chosen member of the group. And also... The ghost will appear on the other side of the room and attach two chains to one person in the group's feet and drag them slowly across the room. While this happens, the boss will walk over to them really, really slowly and jab his sword straight through their chest and kill them in one shot. This is when you want your group members to kill the ghost before he gets there. Now, when he stands up, he's going to hit the tank with a heavy attack, so he has to block and be careful. But there's two different types of heavies. One will actually be an uppercut. There's the fear. Break free. The other will be a big, big hit with a flaming sword. As you can see there... Then three AoE spread out. When that happens, as soon as you see his sword on fire, block. As the DPS and the healers, block. This is our team member getting dragged across the room by the ghost. Kill it, come back. He will still walk over to where the ghost was, but because our teammate is not on the ground anymore, he won't stab him and kill him. So again, do as much damage as you can during this phase. 
Now, I've been pulled by the ghost this time because of where he is health-wise, and he's got the Space Invader mechanic, as I like to call it. You see all these little dots there? Just weave in and out of them, just don't get caught by them, and you'll be fine. If you are chained, however, you won't take damage from them. So, as you can see there, I didn't take any at all. It's safe. But everybody else has to watch their feet. There's the uppercut for the tank to block, just a normal one, and now here comes the flame one in a moment as well, after the Space Invaders, so watch out for this. Weave in and out, weave in and out. Now we have overlap mechanics because we've got high damage in the group. So we've got another ghost. You're going to get rid of it. Mind your feet. If he heavy attacks with a sword, make sure you block because the fire will go around the room. If not, carry on as normal. Now when he's low health, he will still fear. He will still do space invaders. He will still do the heavy attack. But above all, the ghost will pin the tank. As you saw there, our tank got heavy attacked across the room. He went to Spain almost. It was a massive heavy attack. That is when the tank is pinned. And that is an execute mechanic. The tank is the only one who will get hit, and the boss will walk over to it slowly and stab him in the chest and kill him in one shot. That's your window to do as much damage as possible, because if you don't kill him, the tank is dead. Now, if you pin the boss in the corner, the tank's not going to go very far, he's going to die really quickly. But if you turn your back to an empty space, he's going to knock you flying and you've got loads of time. So make sure you manipulate that mechanic if you like, or use it to your advantage. Here, very simple pull. Stack it, burn it. Really, really simple. Everything is exactly where you want it. All it takes is one time stop and nothing's going to move. Big bosses or big targets first as usual. Skeletons will die to general AoE. Just make sure you don't run around the room because running around will just make them chase you. They'll hit you in the back of the head and you will die. And your teammates will laugh at you. Don't run away. Dodge rolling is fine. Running away is not. Now, here is the, uh, the breadcrumb section leading you to the boss and showing you a very important mechanic. This crystal must die. All the adds must die. The tank must be very, very aware of which targets are taunted and which ones are not and grab them as fast as possible. Keep as much AoE down as you can. I would highly recommend using ultimates in this phase. Kill the crystal and of course kill the harvesters and the revivifiers and anything else that are big targets because they will enrage. They will channel uh, power to charge each other up and do even more damage and it will be a mess. They mustn't hit the group. Nasty, nasty night blade attacks and all that kind of stuff from range which can be interrupted. Or, if you get hit in the face with it and you've not got enough CPs to cover your resistances, you may take a one-shot, so be very careful. Bone Colossus always first, turn it away from the group, AoE's down and kill everything else together. Get your time stops in if you've got them, and pin everything down to the ground. Now, as you can see, the Bone Colossus is down quite quickly, but this uh, reanimator needs to be killed because otherwise it will start channeling and making people come back and have health and all that nasty stuff. You don't want to do that. Get them down quick. They're very important, you must kill the crystals, because there's a small portal underneath the crystal. If you don't kill it quick enough, the longer it's alive, the more ads come out. Now that is teaching you mechanics for the last boss, it's very, very important. Now further down here we've got another Bone Colossus, and loads and loads of ads, which you have to kill. Again, you know the big ones have to die first, you know you want to stack everything as much as possible. So the Bone Colossus has been stacked on top of one of the nasty enemies, on top of one of the revivifiers. So you stack him just there, get as much AoE down as you can, all the little adds will die anyway, as long as they're controlled, and then you want to focus this dude here. This one has just charged up, so he's just enraged the dog over there, and he's just enraged the other target in the back there, the reanimator, so you want to make sure you kill them as fast as possible. You can't interrupt the channel when they're trying to enrage, so once it happens, it's either kill it quick or it's your funeral. You have to be very, very fast with this. If you do have low DPS, don't worry. You can still succeed, but you do need to make sure that your tank is the one paying the most attention because they will have to grab that aggro, otherwise you're going to die. Another crystal here. Now we have to make sure, of course, we focus the crystal while killing that bone colossus and again getting rid of all those adds. They are really, really nasty. So kill the crystals, kill the bone colossus, and interrupt or beat down as much um, damage as you can on these three big guys over here. They're really, really nasty. Interrupt the harvesters so they don't bring up any enemies. Make sure you take down the river fire really, really fast. And then you've got this dude at the back, the ambusher, which you need to interrupt because otherwise he's going to hit you with some nasty snipe type abilities. Really, really dangerous stuff. Now, we are about to approach the last boss, and this is where it gets really, really tricky. Now, you'll notice that I'm taking my banner off to put the corrosive armor on. Not only is it a god mode button for 10 seconds, but also it's cheaper ultimate and it attaches to me. Which means instead of putting a banner down, everything disappears and it's just sitting there for another 10 seconds while I'm gaining nothing from it. I may as well use something that's going to be more active while I'm on the move. This is a very, very mobile fight. So if you're on stam DPS, you want something that is quite cheap or something that is going to help you in a short durated period of time or something that's going to be attached to you. 
for magical DPS, you want to be using your death royalty as much as you possibly can if you've got access to it or failing that something that's very, very high burst damage because we are going to be using it a lot. Now, the dragon doesn't need to be bursted down. He's got a lot of percentage-based mechanics. He doesn't actually have an enrage mechanic. So you are fine to do as little damage to him as you want as long as you can control the room. And that is the key point. You need to coordinate and control the room. There's four crystals, one on the gate, and you want to assign your group to one crystal each. Tank in the middle, one crystal each for the healer and the other two DPSs. As you can see, we are in like a triangle formation, excluding the tank, and we're keeping the gate clear. Now, Orin is your target, not the boss. The tank needs to keep the boss busy and move out the poison areas that are put on the ground, while we keep dots on the ground to kill the shouts. The shouts can be rooted, and then you'll notice that we're using time stop as well occasionally to keep them down. During the fight, Oren will skip around the room, and every time he lands on anybody's side, you need to interrupt him. Now, at 85%, he will attach himself to one of the crystals. The crystal will activate, and a Bone Colossus will come out, and you have to kill it fast. Kill the Bone Colossus, kill the crystal. If you don't kill the crystal fast enough, another Bone Colossus will come out, so pay very close attention to that. 75%, you can see he's gone to the other side. So we've called from Azunchin's crystal over there. We all know to go over there and kill it while keeping an eye on Orin for long-ranged interrupts when he starts doing that. You can see his pulse and an ability there. He has to be interrupted. This is why you want, might want to put Crushing Shock on perhaps your healer and the Magical DPS if you have one. Fail on that, stay in your corners or your side as much as you possibly can. Once the crystal is down, go back to your positions. Keep your dots under the boss doesn't matter how long the boss takes, as long as you keep dots down. You can see Orin is pulsing his ability over there. I can't get anywhere near it, but Mizunchin has just now interrupted him. You can see Screw is in the right-hand side. Mizunchin is in the back left, and I'm mostly on the left here, where the crystal on my side and the gate is. So we're just keeping a nice bit of distance away from each other so that we can see when Orin lands, so he can be interrupted. As you can see there, you just got interrupted in the back. Your group have to be awake for that. Again, that crystal was at 65%. So, so far, 85, 75, and 65. Every time a crystal goes down, get back to your positions as much as you can. You'll notice the tank has a nasty, nasty poison dot on the ground that spreads and spreads and spreads and spreads. He's placing that deliberately on the edge of the center of the room so that when it lands, he can then position the new one on the other side of the room. And they'll spread out, and then another one will land, and that one will disappear, and that one will spread out, and so on and so forth. They'll keep replacing each other. Again, 55% now. This gate crystal is available and we have to get it down as fast as possible and then get back in our position in case Oren comes back and we need to interrupt him. So again, 85% crystal, 75% crystal, 65% crystal, 55% crystal, 45% he's going to pick a direction to come from and is a big wall of ghosts. You want to look for that gold guy running around the room who puts up a wall and hide behind it quickly. Now the way that we've coordinated this in our own group is basically once the wall is gone, we kind of center ourselves so we can see where the ghosts are coming from, call the person's name on whose side it's assigned to and face it. Once we face it, we look for the gold guy and we basically go left, right or middle. At the moment, it's in the middle. Very, very simple. Shalks have to have dots on them the whole time. Keep the time stop up, otherwise it will wreck the tank. Now here again, it's screw side, so we all move backwards. Look at the direction of the ghost and we decide where the gold one is. There he is in the middle again, so we stand behind the wall. Again, the tank is getting chased like hell by these shouts every so often. You must keep your dots down to help kill them. You must keep time stop up. Otherwise, if they face you, they will snare the hell out of you and you will die. 200k health, 250k health. Oren will go into the middle of the room and he will take over the dragon and get back his health to about 50%. And now you have to deal with him on his own. He will have shouts coming out of the ground, which you have to deal with. There will be skeletons coming out of all the portals where the crystals were, which you have to deal with. And now the ghosts are going around the room. Uh, random side of their choice. This is why you assigned yourself a distance or a location in the first place. I've got one side, Screws has got another, Mazunchin's got another, and the gate is the other. Every time a ghost wave spawns, your team needs to notice which side it's come from, call it, and look for the gap. Where the gap is, you need to run to it and get through it, and then turn around and carry on what you were doing. If you wait for the ghost to get to you, you are in trouble. Now, every second ghost phase, or almost two and a half phase, the dragon will scream and there'll be four gold pads on the floor. You must all get one before your spread and AoE explodes and get into the center of the room. Ghosts are still coming, pay attention. Pick whichever side they've come from, call it out, look for the gaps, turn around, get back on the dragon and the adds. This is rinse repeat for the rest of the fight, but there are other mechanics coming. As you can see, there's lich crystals that you have to avoid, the tail, um, spray that you saw there, it still needs to be avoided by staying in the gaps, which is throughout the whole fight, and the ghost will continuously join you. Now you can see, obviously, there's a gap there, so use the gap, get through. But at 40%, you can see we've been greeted with a Bone Colossus as well, who must die, and he does nasty heavy attacks. 
You can see the ghost coming from my side. There's a gap in the mid right. Go through it. We've been feared again. Get your gold pad. Get in the middle. As you can see, the tank has died. Now, this is your only res window because the dragon's out of the room when this happens. As you can see, the healer has gone straight for the res. Ghosts are still coming. We've still got to call where they come from. And this is a very important tip right here. Those ghosts have a little spreading AoE underneath their feet, which is really, really, really hard to avoid. It looks like you're away from it, but you're not quite. And as you saw, I didn't die then. That is because there are two sets in the game that you can take advantage of in this particular dungeon, or any dungeon if you like, because deaths will happen. It's really, really rough. So, as a just-in-case precaution, set yourself up with some Eternal Yokida, with some Robust Jewelry if you like, or set yourself up with Phoenix if you're Magicka, and just in case you do get caught by those ghosts, which I unfortunately did, you won't actually die. You'll come back to life. Once every 10 minutes, so it's really risky, but just in case. Now, as you can see, it's still hell in here. The ghosts are still appearing from random walls whenever they feel like it. We've got another Bone Colossus in the room at 30%. So 40%, 30%, 20%, and 10, you will get a Bone Colossus. So you'll get four throughout the execute. So if you overburn it, you're going to get overwhelmed. So take your time. Keep your dots down. Keep your time stops up. Look for the gaps in the ghosts. Note which way they're coming from. Walk through the ghosts. And every two ghost phases, or every two and a half, you will get a screen phase. Pick up your gold pad, get in the middle, rinse repeat. As you can see there's a gap there, get in it, carry on. The reason you go for the gap instead of wait for it to come to you, because if you are at the edges and you wait and wait and wait and wait, and you get through it, then there's a strong possibility it may spawn on the same side as you again and nuke you. So don't do that. You want to hug the middle as much as possible without standing in poison, without getting caught by the blue um, whip from the tail, without getting heavy attacked by that bone colossus where I just had the dodge roll, and make sure you follow the mechanics. So get through the ghosts, get your gold pads, keep your dots down. Now we went into trouble here. This is borderline execute phase. We are going to get another bone colossus because there's a 10% coming up. We're at 14 right now. So the tank just died, which means we're in trouble. And what do we do? Do we risk picking him up, which we can't because the dragon is loose, or do we deal with it? So what we had to do is stay in the ghosts, keep our dots down, and try and survive. And now I'm the only DPS alive and worried. So I basically had to keep out of the main heavy attacks of the boss and the bone colossus, keep my dots up, and survive. Generally, most people won't have to do that because, let's face it, if that does happen, you're pretty much dead. However, if you do know the mechanics for it and you do know when the boss's heavy attacks are coming in and all that good stuff, you can dodge them and you do have a chance of survival, as you just saw. Anyway, that's really, really hard and it's going to take you a lot of practice. So remember some key points. Keep your dots down all the time so you can help the Shalks stop chasing the tank and snaring him because it's a really nasty dot and it will slow them right down. Also, make sure that when the, the dragon screams every two and a half ghost phases, so it'll get halfway across the room and it'll start screaming. There's a very, very simple tip to pay attention to here. Spread out. If you know that scream is coming, spread out so you don't get feared into the poison, because you will. Keep the poison off the group. Don't stand in the poison. Get in the gaps of the ghosts and focus. It's not a burn. You don't have to burn. Take your time. So, hopefully that helped. Hopefully that wasn't too boring. Hopefully that wasn't too complicated. It is an incredibly hard dungeon. It is very, very difficult to do. Don't be disheartened if you don't do it first time. It is going to take you a lot of practice. Get some friends. Stay with the same group as much as you possibly can and learn it together. It will make all the difference. You start introducing different people every five seconds. It's going to get confusing because not everyone's going to understand it. It's very difficult and it takes people days to even get anywhere near completion. So take your time. Practice. You will get it done. So, first of all, thank you all very, very much for watching. I hugely appreciate the support. And if you're not subscribed, please do hit that button. It is free. Furthermore, if you want to help support outside of YouTube, there are some links in the description for Patreon, Twitter, Facebook, and of course the website zonodegaming.com. Don't forget, I also live stream almost every night from 10 p.m. UK time on Twitch as well. That link is also there. Once again, thank you all very, very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.